I'm here today with Stacy Chomiak. Stacy is the author of a new book titled Still Stace, My Gay Christian Coming of Age Story, published by Beaming Books. In this young adult illustrated memoir, Stacy tells the true story of her teenage and young adult years of heartbreak, family conflict, trying to become ex-gay, wrestling with her faith, and finding love. Or Stacy is a children's book illustrator and artist in the animation industry who launched a career working on the beloved series, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Stacy loves to advocate and use her artistic talents for the LGBTQ plus community. And she lives with her family in the West Coast of Canada. You can learn more about Stacy at stacychomiak.com, which is S-T-A-C-E-Y-C-H-O-M-I-A-K.com. So Stacy, uh, congratulations on your new book and thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thank you so much. It's great to be here and chat with you for sure. Happy to be here. So I'd love to hear more about your background, in particular, all the illustration and animation work that you do outside of books. Yes. Yeah. I've been working in animation since um, 2011. And um, so I've worked on sort of various uh, productions. I think they've pretty much all been preschool, young age children's uh, animated productions. So um, yeah, like My Little Pony, Lilith's Pet Shop, um, Transformers, um, more recently, like Rhyme Time Town, a lot of things for um, Netflix and, and DreamWorks. Um, and currently the last few productions, um, I'm working still with DreamWorks. And um, yeah, it's just stuff for, there's so much streaming content that's needed, especially with everyone being at home and everyone, you know, needing to have new things for their kids. So um, right now I'm actually art directing a series of shorts for DreamWorks um, through the studio I work for out of Vancouver. So there's always, always a lot to learn and there's always uh, new fun productions going on. So it's an exciting industry to work in for sure. That's got to be. And imagine, you know, working on some of these things that you're describing and doing, you know, the artwork and animation, things like that for that. It's just got to be so much fun. Yeah, I can't. Sometimes I just, it's kind of silly to get paid to paint and <laughs> draw cartoons, but you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, I'm glad I chose it because it's, it's a nice way to pay the mortgage for sure. I think there are a lot of people that think that you have a dream job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, yes, maybe on paper for sure. I, I think, <laughs> I think the challenge, the challenging thing with that is being an artist, you know, nine to five and being, being creative within those hours and making sure that, you know, you make big clients like DreamWorks happy and, you know, you, you have to sort of do that every single day and finding the time to, to sort of keep up your own inspiration outside of those hours. And, um, you know, that's, I think, what's been the most challenging because if you're not feeling inspired as an artist, it's really difficult to put that into your work. So I think that's probably the most difficult thing about it is when you're just not feeling it and you've got to, you got to do the deadlines for the, for the client, for sure. Sure, sure. So, um, before we get into your new book, what other things have you done relative to books? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Books are fairly new uh, for me. I've, I've wanted to get into them for a while. I, I did a few years ago help like a friend with a self-published book, um, sort of in the progressive Christianity um, realm as well. It's called Downside Up. Um, and the author is Peter Walker. And he, he did sort of, um, it was almost like a children's book for adults and talking about like kind of Jesus's view on things. And so I did um, illustrate that. Um, I think that was back in 2014, I think, but um, I sort of just, you know, animation keeps me busy and I have my own um, things I do for clients on the side and like illustrations and things commissions. And then um, in 2019, um, I did uh, acquire an agent and then soon after that um, got contacted by um, Beaming Books through, through my agent and said they had a manuscript um, called Rainbow Boy that they had acquired and they were looking specifically for an LGBTQ illustrator to illustrate it. So um, I just love the idea. And um, yeah, so I was really happy to jump on board for that project. So that that published in January 2021. Cool, cool. So um, let's talk about your, your new book. Again, the title is Still Stays, My Gay Christian Coming of Age Story. So how did that end up happening? What motivated you to, uh, to write that? Yeah, that's a big question. <laughs> um, like, I mean, it's all, I mean, it's all in the book. Like here I have one of many copies, but um, it, you know, growing up in the evangelical Christian space and, you know, I, my family was really conservative and 
Um, I didn't really struggle with much. I was a really good kid. And, and then in my teens, when I did start struggling with my sexuality, uh, it really, really confused me. And it really, really sort of pulled me out of that world that I only ever knew one thing about. I only ever knew about Jesus and God and these Christian people, these heteronormative Christian people, and all these feelings that I had just didn't fit. And, and I had so much shame about that because there was nobody that, you know, I could really talk to. And, and at the time it was like pre-internet and, um, you know, I just, there was no such thing as a gay Christian that I knew of. There was no talk about it. And if there was any talk about it, it was really like hush, hush whispers. And, um, you know, and eventually, you know, talking about ex gay ministries, that was sort of the, the extent of what Christians would talk about with that. So, um, I struggled for a long time, about 13 years, sort of wrestling with, you know, what should I do? How can I, how can I, you know, how can I make sense of this? Because who I was, was a Christian and I hate to use that label, but my faith was really important to me and my relationship with Jesus and, and God was important to me. So that I couldn't really take out of myself, but then I had these feelings that I also couldn't reconcile. And everyone was telling me that like Jesus hates that and hates homosexuals. And um, so you can't, you can't have both. And I just really internalize all those messages. And, um, and I just continue just to have just shame and sort of go in these cycles of sort of self hate. And um, so eventually, after a really long winding road for 13 years, when I um, made peace with it and got married, and um, after we had our kids, um, I started feeling like, I think I should, you know, tell my story, because maybe there's somebody out there that doesn't have someone else to look up to, because I, there's definitely more and more gay Christians out there now, but I still think there's a need for gay Christian voices in the Christian communities. So um, that sort of was a nutshell sort of uh, reason why I felt compelled to, to do my own story. But I never, ever thought it would be <laughs> this. This is kind of um, a shock still to me. Um, but that's sort of where the motivation came from. Well, especially in the young adult space, there's, I got to believe, still a real need for this. Because, you know, even in today's world, a lot of kids are struggling to figure out their identity you know yeah exactly and I think that was kind of part of the working with um, Naomi that my editor and, and us sort of realizing that we should definitely target it to the teen audience because you know there's not a lot of stories um there's a there's a lot more LGBT stories but especially with the faith aspect and if there are any with the faith aspect often they end with like I had to leave the church I had to cut off my faith it just didn't fit it was too hurtful and for for me it was hard for sure but I was able to reconcile and make peace with both and have a quote-unquote happy ending I mean everybody's life is still an ongoing you know walk but at least I was able to merge those two things and realize that that was something that God created in me and that, that's what I believe so I think having more hopeful stories um, with merging both of those identities is is really what is really important to me for sure so did you find it difficult to write the book or was it kind of easy to finally kind of get this, you know, out in the open or off your shoulders or how, written down, however you want to say it? Yeah, it, it was, it was hard and cathartic and heartbreaking and beautiful and all of the things. I think I did not set out to share as much as I did. Um, I, I definitely wanted to initially just have the Coles notes of my journey but as things developed over time and with my agent and then with getting the book deal and um you know editors sort of pulling at strings and saying like you know this is an important um thing we should talk about and how do you feel about that so once i felt comfortable to share more and more um you know it was definitely a process of me sort of checking in with myself and being like do i feel like this is something that someone else can benefit from me sharing you know i mean i there's definitely things i didn't share because i didn't feel they were necessary or I didn't feel safe to do so. But I feel like I shared a lot of things that are representative of a lot of queer people's journeys. You know, the difficulties with their families, the, the self-hate with themselves, the tumultuous relationships. I mean, these are all really important and sort of relatable things. And just accepting yourself, even if you're not gay, accepting yourself as a fully beloved human being is, is just, you know, something that's really hard for a lot of us to do. 
So yeah, it, it was, it was a definitely a journey for me <laughs> to do that, to write it. And then also to draw everything was, was really challenging actually, for sure. Well, I mean, several of my, you know, other friends from the LGBT community have had similar kinds of, you know, situations, particularly around their family in many cases, mm. or kind of yeah. in the previous religious environment. Yeah. So, you know, has, has your family come to grips with what you're doing or you know, do you think they're going to read your book or have they, or how does that play out? <laughs> Yeah. How does it play out? Um, I mean, it's only been out, I guess, well, almost coming up in a month now, uh, or a couple of months. I, time is strange. Sorry, December 14th. But um, yeah, it, it's an ongoing conversation. Um, I didn't really share with my my parents, at least, that, that I was do, working on the book until I announced that it was coming out because I didn't feel, I didn't want to, you know, invite any sort of conversation or um, editing or anything because that's you know I, I didn't I didn't write it for them um, you know I, I think there it was difficult for me to sort of reconcile that they'll probably be hurt by some things I had to share but at the end of the day um, you know I feel like I needed to share that and I felt like God opened the door for me to do that and so I'm writing it for you know the people that that need it and um, and hopefully we can walk on our own journey together and figure out what that means for us in our relationship um, my, my dad, I just recently heard this week that he is reading it, um, which is <laughs> interesting. So I, I'm sure we'll have a conversation about that. Um, I don't think my mom will read it and that's not really surprising to me that, and that's totally her choice. And then I have some extended family that I have heard nothing from. So, mm. um, you know, I think in a lot of people's families, like silence is quite loud and, you know, that's not, again, not surprising, but I think. I have allowed myself and will try to continue to deal with the grief that comes up from that because, you know, that's, it's hard. You, you want to be seen. Everybody just wants to be seen and especially by ideally your family. And when you don't see that and you don't feel that it's a tough thing to forge ahead with, but, um, but I'm so grateful for the opportunity to, to share this and for the messages from people that I've gotten and the connections I've made. And um, so I think that'll use that as my, fuel to kind of keep going yeah absolutely and i'm sure there are a lot of people younger people that are going to be helped by this so that's incredibly important i hope so yeah so um you know being an illustrator did you kind of think of the book in pictures first or in text <laughs> first yeah that's a good question no i did um i don't have my sketchbook here but i I did think of it in pictures first. I, hmm. um, I did a presentation recently where I did like a PowerPoint and I, I shared the first sketch. It's like a really um, scrawled sketch of, I was on commuting into Vancouver for work and I just drew um, myself like in a pew sort of like w with an imagined spotlight on myself, just feeling like out of place and wondering how am I going to do this? And so it kind of all evolved from that. I, I did like little storyboards of sort of these main beats of things that I thought would be helpful to share. And then um, and then when things evolved, then sort of we switched over to doing the manuscript. And um, so, and I and I love writing. And I guess now I can call myself a writer now that it's published, I guess <laughs> I'm allowed to. And I, I hope to do more writing, but I, I definitely am, I, I would say an artist first. So um, it was, it was hard in that I put everything of myself into the manuscript and then forgetting that I would then have to put everything of myself again into the illustrations and sort of channel, you know, all those feelings and the vulnerabilities and just the, the mindset and the, and the pain of a lot of those moments into, you know, into hopefully connecting with people. And, and I tried to do that, but it was definitely, it was pretty tiring for sure. But looking back now, I, I'm so grateful that I was at least tried to go there because I, I think it comes through a little bit. Cool. That's cool. So um, you mentioned, you know, earlier that there were some things you left out of the book, right? Which I think mm -hmm. every author, you know, ends up having to scale down the size of their book and take things out that they really don't want to. <laughs> it's true. So in, in your case, are there things like that that you're really sad about that you couldn't include? Yeah, I mean, there it, there are. There's things that I chose not to even write in the first place. Um, but then there's things that I did write and I actually loved that um, we trimmed just because it didn't really make sense. There, there were a couple chapters that we had at the beginning of the book where I was at camp really young and sort of had an interaction with my mom. And it was it was helped to inform sort of our relationship. Um, and I really, and then there was like a scene of me in chapel and, and I really loved that. And, um, and then there was the chapter after that, where I, I sort of had a conversation with 
a boy that had a crush on me in, in science class or something. And um, so it was just like wonderfully awkward. And so I, I kind of, I kind of, I'm sad that that had to be cut, but it, it made sense to, um, you know, begin the book where we do, but um you know, you, again, learning to trust, trust the editor. And I think she's really smart. And I think it's more concise and all that. If it was up to me, it probably would not be as well received <laughs> as it is. So you got to trust the editors. Well, Naomi's wonderful. She's, yeah, you know, she's done a she ton is. of great books. So, you know, I, I, I'm glad that you, you know, built a trust with her. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially when it's like, I felt like I was handing somebody my diaries. And that, you know, because I mean, literally I did, I went through my own diaries and then wrote it out. And that, that was sort of a, a learning journey for me because every project up until now that I had worked on, was just, I, I mean, I put my out art, my art out there, but this is myself in every possible way. So it was pretty scary to sort of be like, okay, why don't you edit my, my journals? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I did definitely trust her and she's great. So I know a lot of authors feel that the whole process of going through writing a book helps them to grow individually. Mm. So, did you find any of that yourself? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Just, I mean, learning about the specifics of, of publishing. I mean, this is the first book I've written. So just, just learning how this all works and how many rounds of things that it takes and how many people are involved and, and what they're looking for and what I should be thinking about. And so just a chance for me to sort of grow that skill set was really, really helpful. And, and it helped me to see that, like how much I love doing it and, and sort of take ownership of that. Like, it's not just something that I can do on the side. Maybe it is something I can do more, you know, that can be actually published. So to have that confidence was really, really neat. And, um, and then to just like, as I merge my art with writing for the first time was, was such a gift. So um, yeah, I learned so much and I, I can't wait to do more projects like that in the future, hopefully. Cool, cool. So is there any particular favorite part of the book that you want to tell people about? Ah, oh, there's lots of there's lots of parts I love. Um, I mean, I, I kind of love the opening part at camp just because I have a, I always have a, an affinity for um, my my time at Bible camp. And, and so I, I tried to ch sort of channel that. Um, so I love that opening part. And then um, there's just some good like angst <laughs> in, in, with uh, just the struggle of like, you know, everyone can identify with like feeling things for somebody, but trying not to. And just that was really fun to sort of get back into that headspace. And um, and then, of course, just the the relief of being able to sort of reconcile yourself that that, of course, is was a beautiful part to share. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of you know, I think it, it's more sweet because of all the difficulties that I sort of went through um, to get there. So yeah, hopefully that, that comes through, hopefully. So, um, you know, we mentioned before you do a whole lot of animation work mm -hmm. um, and illustrations and things like, so how does, or does, you know, being a, a queer Christian impact that work or that aspect of your work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I think it just helps me to see things from a different perspective. I mean, often at work, I have to come out as a Christian most of the time because, you know, there's this community is very artsy and there's a lot of queer people. And so that's sort of like, oh, yeah, no big deal. But then I mentioned like, oh, I went to church. You're like, oh, oh, you go, <laughs> you go to church, especially as a queer person. It's always quite shocking to people. So I, I think, you know, I mean, I work on the design team of, of shows and um, so I'm not doing the actual animation. I'm designing like the characters and the locations and stuff. But I think there's sort of an affinity in a way that, you know, at least myself, the way that I see the world that helps to inform my work. And and sometimes the way that we design things, if there's characters that should look a certain way that, um, you know, I think a queer person can sort of have, have more sensibilities for it. I think that's helpful too. And and hopefully, you know, I have aspirations to, to maybe do directing one day and, and hopefully bring more sort of queer stories into that industry because there's there's not enough in, in that industry represented mm. as well. So, um, and, you know, if, if writing too, maybe I'll do some writing in that in that department, who knows, but I, I'm happy to see, you know, how um, the way I see the world can sort of be translated into that industry. So you mentioned church, I mean, a good, have you found a good church environment that's, you know, supportive of, you know, your um, identity? Yeah. Yeah. We, we've been really um, happy to, to do that. Like, thankfully, which is, it's, again, it's been a really long winding journey to find a church that's, you know, that aligns with our beliefs and also accepts us. 
and you know there's often the feedback that I've I have gotten and a lot of my queer friends have gotten is you know it's so difficult to find a Christian church if, if you have a Christian sort of faith background and a lot of people say like oh well you know there's a lot of united churches that well you know are really affirming and and that's beautiful and great and I I totally am excited about that but if that's not necessarily where my faith aligns with it seems silly to choose a church based on my sexuality which is something that straight people do not do but somehow for the queer community it that seems okay so that's I think that's often a challenge that we run into is is like realizing that we would prefer to choose a church based on our faith and not our sexuality and that that leaves us with, with very few options so um, thankfully, we, we do have one. Um, we used to live in, in Maple Ridge, which is not very far from here. And, um, you know, I did the typical email a whole bunch of churches and just out myself and say, this is what's this is who I am. What's your belief? Because, you know, I like many queer Christians, I've been really hurt many times by churches that do the bait and switch. And um, mm. it, we, you know, it, it's really traumatizing. So you sort of want to cut to the chase and say, OK, when you say welcoming, what do you actually mean? Where's the quotations? <laughs> I need to know, get laid all out because you know, it's, it's really, really hard to keep doing that. So yeah, we, we belong to a, a beautiful church called open door church in Maple Ridge. And I'm actually serving on the board as well right now. So wonderful. Um, That's yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Good for you. I'm glad you found that. Thank you. Yeah. Us too. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's any one thing in particular that you'd like people to take away from your book, what would you say that it is? Hmm. I hope that people see themselves in, in my story, regardless of their background of faith or sexuality. I hope that it reminds people to know that they're wholly and fully loved as they are and that they don't have to change anything about themselves to be loved. And I hope that it helps people to just move forward into their own lives more fully and that they, you know, will, will find ways to flourish because I think the tragedy of of my life then and a lot of people's lives is that we don't know how to fully have a life that is abundant. And if we have that belief in Jesus, if that's what he's wanting for us, I, I think that's the thing is how do we grab onto that abundance and walk into it? And so I, I hope people will sort of get that message from it, even a little bit. Good, good. So you alluded to the fact that you want to do some more books. Um, I know you, the first one just came out. So is it too early to ask anything about what your ideas are or what do you yeah. think? Yeah, I, I think there's, I, there's so many ideas. I have like an on, an on, like a, a note that I'm always adding to, but um, I, I'd love to get um, back into the, the sort of the queer kid lit space and, um, th you know, just do some more stories for kids and um and then there's some other YA ideas I'm thinking about as well and there's not like you know I, I don't think there's enough stories about like fertility um you know we had our kids through IVF and just sort of the, the perspective of like queer parents and so I'd love to do stories that had that in mind um so I think there's a lot of opportunity still for representation and um so I I hope that I can get some stuff out there. So well, pu publishing I'm learning is quite slow. So uh, <laughs> just, I'll just keep kicking ideas to my agent and see <laughs> what happens. It absolutely is a long trail, a long journey. Yes. So yeah. uh, I can relate to that, but uh, for sure. But anyway, you know, I hope the new book goes out, goes really well. And um, you know, you're able to come out with some additional ones. That would be just awesome. Yeah, I hope so too. Yeah, we'll see. So again, the title of Stacy's first book is Still Stace, My Gay Christian Coming of Age Story. And you can learn more about Stacy and her book at stacychomiak.com. So Stacy, thanks so much for joining us and congratulations again and uh, best wishes. Thank you so much for having me. It was great to chat.